Hi guys, welcome to Programming in Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building a project and our project is going to be a port sniffer. So this will be a tool that we write in Rust and we can access it via the command line. It will also be multi-threaded and we'll have multiple different flags that we can pass into it. To create our new project, we want to call cargo new and then the name of our project. In this case, I'm just going to call it IP sniffer. We want it to be a binary, so we're going to pass the bin flag. First, we want to consider the type of syntax that we want to use here. So these are what valid inputs for our command line tool should look like. The first one will be a flag that will present us with a help screen. The second one here will allow the user to set how many threads they want this process to use. And the final one will be just calling the tool and then calling it on an IP address. And this will use the default set number of threads that we specify inside of our code here. And it will scan this IP address automatically. We want to bring in the standard library environmental namespace, and this will allow us to pull our arguments out of our command line. Our arguments will be a args variable that is a vector of strings. We can do this simply just by calling environment args.collect and this will then take all the arguments that we pass to this program and put them inside a vector of strings. So we can see what this looks like by iterating through it and also by just printing it with the debug flag. We can call our program by simply calling cargo run and then if we want to pass arguments to it we put double dashes here and this tells cargo that we're not putting the arguments towards cargo itself but rather we want to put it towards the executable and then say we pass in dash h and you'll see here that the first element inside of our vector will be the path to the executable and then the second element will be our flag here if we call it with more arguments you can see here it's the same syntax we can assign our program name to a variable called program and we can just pull it out of our argument vector by calling the zero index and we can clone it so we could do something like this but it's a little bit too verbose so let's set up a struct for our flag threads an IP address so that we can create a struct to hold all of this data properly. All right, so I've created a struct here called arguments. Inside of it, we have a field called flags, which will take a string. Then we have our IP address field, which will take an IP address. Now this is an enum. It basically can either be version four or version six. For those of you who don't know much about IP addresses, there are two different patterns that we can follow. There's IP version four and IP version six. We want to make sure that it's valid before we actually try to run anything on top of it. Then finally, our threads number will be a U16. And now that we have a struct, let's create an implementation block so that we can create a method that will allow us to instantiate this struct. The method that we want to create here is called new. This will take in our arguments, so a reference to our vector of string, and then it will return a result that will have our argument struct inside of the OK portion of it, or it will have a static slice of string inside of the error portion of it. So the reason why we're using this static reference to a slice of string is so that we can send back the errors to the main function and then have it handle those errors. So first we want to run checks on our args list. We want to see what the length is like. So you can see here we're checking to see if the length is less than two because remember when we run our argument list the lowest amount that we can have are two so the help flag or if we just throw an IP address in so it'll have the program name and then the IP address or the program name and then the help flag. Our largest will be if we have the program name Name, the thread flag, the thread number, and then the IP address. Below two length here, we're just going to pass back an error that says not enough arguments. Above four, then we're going to pass back an error that says too many arguments. Because we're bringing in our arguments as strings, we want to bring in the standard library str from stir trait and this will allow us to convert our string to our IP address type. First we want to create a variable that looks at the first index of our vector. Then we're going to use an if let binding to destruct our IP address from string which returns a result and if we get back an OK then we use this IP address inside of here. We can then explicitly say return our argument struct and then we'll put flag in here as an empty string and then we'll send back IP address which is this here 
here as IP address, and then we'll put our default thread number, which is four. If we don't get an okay from trying to convert F into a IP address, that means that there's no IP address there, which means that either A, we have one of our flags, so either dash H or dash J, or B, we have some gobbledygook. We want to assign a variable flag to args1.clone. Then we want to check what's inside of flag by checking to see if it contains dash H or if it contains dash help. If it contains one of these, we want to check to see if the argument length is exactly equal to two. If we're calling help, we do not want to have other arguments as well behind help. We just want to show this uh, message here that we're printing out, or it just says usage, and it tells the user what J does, and it tells the user what H or help does. So this says usage dash J to select how many threads you want, and then we have a return character and a new line dash H or help to show this help message. So we're actually going to return an error with help inside of it so that we can do some error handling outside of this function. Then we want to check to see if flag contains dash H or dash help. This case is basically saying, okay, well, if the args.lang wasn't two, but it also contains dash H or dash help, then we just want to return that there are too many arguments. The only case that this will happen is if the user put in dash H or dash help and then put in something else after it. So our final if is just going to check to see if our flag contains dash J. And if it does, then we're just going to match on turning our args index three into an IP address. And we're going to bind it to this IP address variable here. So then we'll just unwrap our okay value here. Otherwise, if we get an error here, we don't care about the actual error inside of it. We'll return our own error that says not a valid IP address, it must be an IPv4 or an IPv6. So we want to deal with our threads variable. So because we're getting strings again, we want to be able to change those strings into a U16. We're going to use this parse method, which will allow us to pass in U16, and it will then allow us to convert the string into U16. All right, so our parse method here will return a result as well, and all we really want to do is unwrap the value from inside of the OK and then bind it to threads. If we get an error, then we just pass back failed to parse thread number. Then at the bottom of this else if statement, we just want to return return an okay with our argument struct inside of it. We've bound this to threads, so threads will be a parsed u16. Flag will be the string that we've been matching on up here, and then IP address will be the IP address that we matched on right here. You'll see that we're still getting an error here because we have one more case, but we need to write an else statement here. And in this else statement, all we really need to do is just return error invalid syntax. If all of these checks fail, then we're just simply throwing in gobbledygook that our program shouldn't be able to parse. All right, so we can just create a variable called arguments, then we call arguments, pass in a reference to our args up here, and then we want to call unwrap or else on it, and this takes a closure. Inside this closure, we just want to check to see if the error contains help, otherwise we're just going to handle the other errors in a standard way. Before we go any further, we need to bring in another namespace here. We're bringing in the namespace standard library process, and this will allow us to manage the way that our program shuts down. If our error contains help, we want to call process exit, which will actually quit out of our program here. And we want to pass a zero so it doesn't panic. And then for our else statement, we want to use this eprintln macro, which is uh, error print new line. So it'll say the program name and then problem parsing the arguments, and then it will display the error. All of these errors that we wrote up here, aside from this help one, will then display after this. And then we will exit the process like we did up here. Let's bring in a few more namespaces so we can do some multi-threaded programming. We need to bring in standard library sync, MPSC, sender and channel, and then we need to bring in standard library and thread. We're going to then bind our arguments.thread to a variable here called number thread. So then we want to instantiate a channel here. So we're going to destruct the tuple that gets returned from it with our transmitter and receiver. And then we want to iterate from zero to the number of threads that we have. And in this iteration, we're going to take TX and we're going to bind it to another TX variable. So TX.clone. This way, each of our threads has its own transmitter. We want to spawn our thread with a move closure and inside of this move closure we're going to call a scan function that we're going to create and we're going to pass it the tx that we've created the i so the number of the thread then our ip address and then our 
number of threads that was passed into our arguments. Before we go further, we also want to create a constant. So this is the max port that we can actually sniff, 65535. All right, so now let's create our scan function. So this will take in our sender, with a U16 inside of it. Our start port, so this is the I that we sent in. Remember that we were iterating from zero to our thread number. The reason we're doing this is so that, for instance, our first thread will look at port number one, our second thread will look at port number two, and so on and so forth. This will allow our scan function to actually scale based on the amount of threads that we pass into it. Then we have our address here, which will be our IP address. And finally, we have our num threads, the number of threads that we're currently using in the program. So we wanna take our start port here and add one to it. And that way we're not looking at port zero. Then we wanna create a loop here. Then we wanna jump up here and we wanna bring in another thing from the net namespace so that we can actually connect to our IP address. And the thing we wanna bring in here is called TCP stream. This will allow us to create a TCP stream. As we're looping through this, we wanna match on TCP stream connect. Then we're gonna pass in our address, which is our IP address and then the port number that we're currently scanning. We wanna match and see what our result is. So if we get an okay, we don't really care what's inside of it. We just care that it's an okay because that signifies to us that the port is open. Then we just wanna print a little period here. So this will actually appear in the command line, just a little dot. It will just send back feedback to the user that it is working by sending back a dot every single time it finds a port that's open. We wanna go back up to the top here and bring back one more library. This will be standard IO, input output. We wanna bring in self and write. And of course this is important so that we can actually use IO inside of our thread here. So to do that, we we want to call IO STD out and we want to call flush and then we want to unwrap it. This allows us to, as it says here, constructs a handle to the standard output of the current process. And by flushing it, it allows us to send all these print statements to what is essentially a mutex of shared data. Then we want to call TX.send and we want to pass in our port here. And this will then send back to our RX that we created down here, the port number that was open. So then if we get an error back, then we just want to return back an empty expression here. Finally, we wanna to check to see if our max port minus our current port is less than the number of threads. If we get to a point where we have zero here and it's less than and equal to the current threads, then we wanna break out of the loop so it doesn't just keep going. We want to iterate our port by the number of threads. For instance, say we have 50 threads. The first thread will iterate up to 51. This next thread will iterate up to 52, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That way, again, this function will be able to scale. I forgot to mention that we're creating an address variable here that corresponds to our arguments.ip address and then we're passing it into scan. That way we don't have to worry about moved values here. All right, so outside of our closure here, we wanna create a mutable out vector, and this will be an empty vector. We want to drop our TX from this scope. That way the TX is only in the other threads, it's not in the main thread. Then we wanna get our output from our receiver here. So we wanna iterate through our receiver and push that into our out vector. We wanna follow this with a println statement so that we have a line between all of our dots and our output. And then we wanna sort our out vector. Then we wanna iterate through our out and we want to print out each port that is open. And that's actually our completed application. Let's take a look at it and see it in action now. So if we call cargo run, you can see here that we get an error and it says here we get our uh, program name here, ipsniffer.exe, problem parsing arguments, not enough arguments. If we put dash dash and then put dash h, we should get our help menu here. So now let's actually run this application on an IP address. So you can just run it on your router IP address like I'm about to do. So I'm gonna pass in J here, and then I wanna pass in, say, a thousand threads, and then I want to then call 192, 168, one and one. We're getting these dots. So each of these dots signifies that it's found an open port. Now it kicks back all the ports that are open. So I have 2380, 234, 443, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes all the way up here. Anyway, this code will be up on GitHub so that you guys can take a look at it. All right, guys, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.